Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. I wanted to do a little market depth analysis in this episode. Now you're looking at the Trade Hill Exchange and on the left hand side you have a price graph, the current price, and you can see you can get five day, one hour. Not the best graphing on this side. Hopefully Trade Hill will do some improvement on their graphing. Then you have market depth over here. The way you understand this is that these blue dots, these are then on the left hand column is the number of bitcoins. This is the size and the price is as you move this direction to the right the price increases. So just a kind of back of the matchbook analysis you can see that the depth of the buy orders is quite large you can see all these 200s hanging up here but it's it's not nearly as useful that's why I want to jump over to Mount Gox but before I did that I wanted to take a look at the current chart as I pointed out we are in the process of resetting the MACD on the long term and I'm kind of redrawing these flag trend lines on a daily basis to see you know where, where we're going to go if we're going to break out. It looks to me just based on some long-term technical analysis that we probably are going to break out to the upside on this sort of building flag formation. That's my guesstimate. But Anyway, let's jump over to Mount Gox and do some in-depth depth analysis. So when you go to Mount Gox and you choose trade data, you have a choice of last 24 hours or you can do market depth. Now, this is kind of a graph of the market depth we're looking at. I wanted to break that down in more of a granular way so that you can see what we're talking about. So what I did was I just took this is very useful information they give you here. I just took this data and basically highlighted all of it. And I did the bid, then I did the ask. But I've already done it, so I'm just going to show you kind of roughly what I did. And once you have all the data here, you'll just right click it and copy it and then you'll jump over to I use open office which is open office calc and then you can just paste it all in and you can see there's all the data so I've already done that on another one so I'm gonna kill this one and jump over to that one now this what I've done here is I've taken the bid and the ask and I've set them side by side and then what I'm going to do is what I did was because the price is extended so far towards the upper side as opposed to towards the lower side the lowest prices were in the 14s but the highest were all the way in 22s what I decided to do to make it fair is to chop off at two dollars from the current price we'll just call that 17 so the bottom level I set was 15, the top level I set was 19, and you can see that here. Here's the bid, these three columns. Here's the ask, these three columns. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to order these by size. So I'm going to take this column C, and I'm going to set it to descending. Okay, and what that's going to give me is the largest blocks of bids in the price. Okay, so you can see the largest block of bids is 69.55. That's 7,000 bitcoins someone's bidding on and that's roughly a hundred thousand dollars at current prices. So it gives you an idea of that. Now what I want to do is I also want to take the ask column and I want to set that in descending order as well. What that's going to give me is a side-by-side -side comparison of the depth of the market. Now the first thing that jumps out at you is when you highlight this first column you can see the the greatest depth we have on the ask side is somebody sitting out there waiting to sell about 2000 and they want 17.6 for it that's 
called market overhang or overhead resistance. Now, back down at 16.5, though, we have almost 7,000. You can see back at 16, we have 6,000. So for us to get to this level, about 2,000, that's on the ask overhang, to go down on the bid side, we've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps down to 15 to get down to the number that we have here. And so we can just go down and compare them. We've got 1,800 to 500. Here's 600 to 153. We'll keep going down, 258 to 69. So you can see our depth, and we'll go all the way down here and see if they match up. And they actually go farther. There's a larger number of asks, just separate bids. But as far as volume, you can see that the buy column is much has much more depth. So at the point where we have 342 buys, as far as the largest size of buys, we only have 77 corresponding asks. So you could also total these columns, and that would give you an idea as well. But just looking at this, these rough numbers, you can see that comparing these two columns, the power of buying is much stronger than the power of selling. In other words, there's a lot of a lot more money waiting to come in. Now, as these buyers as their order orders are unfilled, you can see, for example, this block here. Sixty five hundred bitcoins they want to get they want to pay sixteen dollars for that. Now if the market continues to move up or stays flat, you will probably see this person and other people begin to move those bids up to a higher price because ultimately if they're aggressive enough, if they believe in bitcoins enough, they're going to want to get filled. They're going to want the coins. They're not going to want to ha sit there and have a bid below the market as the market moves away from them. So just comparing this section down to $15 and this section up to $19, you can see we've got two to three times the number of buyers waiting to come in. That's tremendously bullish just on the technical picture of how many buyers want to get into the market. So I've had a number of people ask me to do some type of analysis on what size this market can become. And this is an indication of what I'm talking about of the amount of buyers to come in. Now, if you just let's just do some rough calculations. We've got at current time we're at about six million bitcoins. That's outstanding. Remember, our total that will be able to be produced is approaching infinity towards 21 million. So it'll never reach that. Be 20.99999. So. We'll just say 21 million is the total, but right now we've only got six. So if we take this six million times the current price is $17, we've got a market cap of 102 million. Wow, that seems low. Let me do that again. 17 times six million. And that's correct. So that's a market cap of 102 million. Now that's a pittance. That is such a tiny market compared to anything. So let's let's compare it to some things. We'll just leave that there. And let's jump out and let's do a market cap. Let's take Apple Computer. There's a good hot stock. Doesn't seem to go down. But that's a real company that produces real things. That's a $310 billion market cap. Let's look at an up and come or something that's really isn't proven, such as Netflix. And there's a market cap of $13 billion. So I would call that kind of a speculative market cap. If you look at the key statistics on this company, their revenues are about $2 billion. They're in the positive. They don't have a lot of debt, but it's not a big company as far as what the revenues are and obviously it's kind of speculative because there's a lot of players that could just take them out overnight 
if some content providers join together with some access providers and they could just put these guys out of business kind of the same way that uh, Netflix put Blockbuster and and Hollywood out of business so kind of a risky business model not really certain but you can see 13.9 we'll call it a 14 billion dollar market cap so enough people believing in the product that it's going to succeed and willing to bet this money and they're seeing some returns so let's take that market cap and do a little math using that market cap so we're gonna take our 14 billion dollars and then we're gonna go ahead and divide that by the existing number of bitcoins and that gives you a price per bitcoin of two thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars a coin that's just if enough speculative investment flows into the bitcoin to equal the level of speculative investment that has flowed into netflix so let's jump over to Apple and let's take their market cap which is 310 billion dollars and let's do that one so we'll take 310 billion divided by the current six million Bitcoins outstanding, and that equals a price of $51,666 a coin. So let's take one more figure just to give you an idea. The outstanding amount of dollars, as far as dollars and derivatives, one of the figures that I've seen is $600 trillion. six hundred trillion dollars almost too big possibly break our calculator so we're just gonna say let's say that and this is just dollars let's just say that one percent of that flowed in to bitcoins that's going to be six that's thousand that's million that's billion that's trillion. One percent of the money stock divided by the number of bitcoins, six, equals one million dollars a bitcoin. So that's one to think about. So looking at our market depth it looks like if any of that type of money starts to believe in bitcoins then I don't even know what the upper limit is you tell me and we'll talk to you next time